in the in the summer, Stoz, you were one of the first, weren't you, to come in? Yeah. And then Righty not long after. What what was it like? And Paz, you you were sort of in on trial for a while. Yeah, that's having, right. You know, I came sort of halfway through pre-season. Yeah, I'd just like to know you three to start. How, how do you remember that summer with a completely new squad, really? And it just seemed to, you know, by by a few days into pre-season, certainly by the start of the season, you all seemed very close-knit. So what, what was it like coming in and starting from scratch? Um, yeah, for, for me, it was um, a period in everyone's um, sort of career where um, you had young players who were thriving to get somewhere. Um, and achieve something in the game. You had older players, um, including myself, who probably missed out on maybe what they should have done a few years prior. Um, I think it was a combination of that and a manager with the experience um, that Gary had that, that drove us on. Really, um, I think it was a it was a massive risk to have so many players um, brought in. I think I think it was was it sixteen? I think it was sixteen players or something like that. Yeah. Um, that hadn't really met each other, hadn't really known too much about each other apart from a couple of us. Um, but yeah, we, like you say, we we uh, it took a while to get going a little bit in, in the actual season. But once we started clicking into gear, um, you know, it was uh, you know it was a, a job well done in the end. But I, I've got to say, he, he Gary Johnson, he he brainwashed us. And Dan will come on to a story about when we played Woking about third game on in, in, in the season about Pelly being we won a lot and Pelly coming off at half time saying if we, you know if we'll be top of the league after three games. Dan, Dan will tell you the story. Um, and obviously he realised the process when he was there in January. But he brainwashed us into you know his first thing to me. He said we've got to win the league, that, and, and that was it. And from that moment on, it was. Uh, yeah, uh, like I said, job well done, and uh, it was very intense. But you know, we, we got there. In the end. Yeah, right. So, what was it like coming in with that pressure, knowing that you you had to win the league, basically? Yeah, it's um, well, <clears throat> we're all hungry for different reasons. We're all hungry for the same objective, really. Um, like Stoz like said, the older lads um, to prove that they were good enough to play in the football league, um, having come so close a lot. Some of us. Um, not quite getting there, and obviously with the younger lads um, proving a few people wrong who might have released them or whatever, and um, just proving a few people wrong. And we it was obviously drilled into us as soon as we signed. Obviously the bounce back um, sort of slogan got us. It was drilled into you as soon as soon. Well, before you even signed, you were told that had to the club had to bounce back up. So um, it was uh, that's how it was. And even though we we're all new, uh, we we knew like I knew stars and knew a few other lads who you obviously played against over the years etc and um <clears throat> so it's like you, you get speaking and as soon as you get into a pre-season um it's like you're, you're all best mates anyway and then you and once that's in, instilled in you and you're drilled to win the league then that was our main objective and that was the only objective really and um obviously the rest is history we we've done it and we're flying colors in the end yeah pars i think I'd like to ask you about the letter that you wrote a little bit later on, but <laughs> with with that pressure that Wrighty that pressure that Wrighty just mentioned, you you drew a few at the start, didn't you? You you, you drew a few and, and won yeah. a couple. Then did you ever think? Did you ever feel that pressure, real intense pressure at the start of the season? I don't think. Um, I think like Stars and, and Wrighty you've just said there. I think we all knew exactly. Um, I think Gary Johnson was was so honest. Um, and we knew what was at stake, and I think he um, he recruited some senior pros who who played a lot of football matches, who had lots of experience, um, and I think he he used us as maybe um, sort of role models, if you like, for for the younger guys in the team. And I think we just sort of yeah, we might not have started as as well as we would have liked, but I think we all knew that. Um, it was such a new group um, that a li- we needed a little bit of time to click. And um, as soon as we got that momentum going, um, sort of that air of invincibility sort of spread amongst the group. And I think we um, we w- worked so hard on and off the field and um, we left nothing to chance. Um, we worked harder than anyone in, in that league that year and we thoroughly deserved to go up. Yeah, Joyce, I'll let you get a question in a second. But Dan, Dan Holman, um, 
you know, everyone says you need to have a good, a great spirit to win a league title. And these guys would play pretty much every game. I think Pars and Stoz, you literally played all 46 that year, didn't you? And right, he wasn't yeah. far off, far off it. So you came in in January, um, having played against Cheltenham. What was it like spirit-wise, you know, changing room, like coming in as the new boy in January with every, everyone sort of riding so high? Yeah, it was, it was class to be fair. It was just like everything was just much better than like any other club I'd been at, like from coach journeys, like quizzes, just in the morning, everyone in there all together, um, probably because they were winning. But it was just like, obviously, Stars, Righty, Pars were all big parts of it. Just like a friendly but sort of focused atmosphere. Um, but just the little touches, really, that um, attention to detail in meetings, um, training ground, like no one shot off really early. Like it was just a, it was easy to settle into because everyone, obviously we were flying, but everyone was just welcoming, but welcoming, but knowing you had to have a job to do really. Yeah. It was, it was spoken about how important the, the bounce back campaign obviously was, you know, the chairman, uh, the manager, but then the first sort of nine games of the season, you know, Forest Green took 27 points out of a possible 27 yes. points. Um, obviously, a, a football season doesn't get decided within the first two months. Um, but how did you find that as a group when that was what you were trying to do, be the, you know, the, the top dogs at the end of the season? Do you want me to go? Go on, Stars. Um, yeah, but obviously, you, you, you're constantly looking at the team above you or the teams above you, you know what they're doing. And like, like you said, they, they win nine consecutive games um, and put us under pressure. But I can, I can remember... Um, Prior to the game, Gary Johnson would write um, on his whiteboard key games and it would give us six or seven key games for the season. Um, and obviously the Forest Green one was up there. We, we, I think we, we played them in their place first. I think if we had lost that game, we would have been either 12 or 15 points behind or something, something like that. It was, it was a big, it was a big, big jump, um, which would have been a lot to ask. Um, and we went there and we should have won the game. We drew 2-2, two -two, but, you know, we should have won the game. Um, I think just going there, I think we were the first team that went there and sort of didn't dominate for the whole game, but they knew that, you know, we weren't just going to go away with, um, you know, a tail between our legs. Um, and then from that moment on, when we knew we were, we, we were better than them, really, uh, on the pitch, um, Gary Johnson was big off the pitch. It was having the atmosphere in the dressing room, the team spirit, um, collectiveness. He was big in terms of watching all of their social media stuff, you know, what are the players saying, what the manager saying, and his mind games <laughs> towards <laughs> yeah, his his mind games towards the end, um, well, especially towards Christmas time and stuff, um, when uh, when panic he started coming to a bit of pressure. Um, you know, Gary Johnson's mind games were you know were, were just sensational, but. He had a group behind him that believed in everything he was saying uh, and, and would do anything for him um, at that moment in time. Um, and then you, you speak about after Christmas bringing in, you know, the top goal scorer in the league in really and, and that just took us onto a new level. So um, that was the key for us, uh, you know, bringing him in in January. That, that, that was the one that was going to uh, um, make us go on and, and, and do what we did. Yeah, and you, you mentioned the 2-2 the draw up at the new lawn that Tuesday night. It was quite a, a tight game, big crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, I think a lot of people spoke that season about it, saying it was a shame that those games didn't take place later in the season when they were kind of, could have been almost like season deciders. But did they feel like season decider games then or did it just feel like just a normal game the front end of the season? Uh, well, like... Go on, go on. Sorry, Stoz. Um, like Stoz said, is the gaffer pulled out six or seven games throughout the whole season, which we knew were, were big matches um, that we couldn't lose. Um, I don't think there was many games out of the, in the season that out of the big ones that we did lose, to be fair. So, um, obviously, there we identified them as obviously the, at, at one of the teams to finish ahead of to win the league. Um, well, finish ahead of all of them. But, but, <laughs> 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 but, uh, um, but obviously, if you finish above them, you won't be far off it. So, um, but yeah... Just touching on obviously the start they had. I remember I used to sit opposite Downsy on the coach. I can't remember what away trip it was, but um, they just won their ninth game, the, the first nine games, and he said, "Oh, Forest Green have won again." And I was like, because I it was the same sort of similar team 
that was still there to when I left. Obviously, they'd spent a bit more money um, since I left there. But um, I was like, I don't know. I, was, I knew how dedicated we, we all were um, in, from the top of the, the club right down <coughs> to, to the players and, and to the fans and everything around the club. We were just dedicated, like you say, bounce back. The whole club needed to bounce back and that dedication and hard work. I said to Downsy, um, nah, we'll catch them, we'll catch them. I, I can't remember how many points we were off after nine games. But, um, I said, nah, we'll catch them. Um, I don't know if it was just hoping rather than knowing, but um, obviously uh, our hard work and dedication did in the end. And uh, definitely the two games against them helped. Uh, it would have been nice to have beat them in one of them, but obviously not to lose. Uh, continued our momentum um, in our in some of our unbeaten runs that season. And uh, Obviously, it was enough to get us over the line. Brings us quite nicely on to the, uh, the Tranmere game. We were, going to, we were going to ask you about that unbeaten. The record was broken at Tranmere, wasn't it? With the 1-0 win, yes. uh, righty with the goal. I think that, I think that made, me and Joyce, you were just checking before we came on. I think it was 22nd unbeaten, that one. And then you, you were unbeaten again one more after that before the run was ended. So, incredible records. Um, what, what, what was that Tranmere game like? It was quite, remembered quite a lot for the free kick, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so, so, sorry to put in there, Paz or, or Holman, but that free kick, John, I'm telling you now, we worked on. <laughs> I, 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 so this is God's honest truth, and the boys will tell you, right? Four or five times, right? And Holman, he, he struck it every time. And every time, it either went in the top corner or he, or he scored. Every time. And then when he did it, he, turn, <laughs> he, he actually turned around in the game and started laughing. And I thought, is he taking the <laughs> it? Sorry about the language. <laughs> But yeah, oh, he went to, in, to Rosehead and started laughing. Yeah. <laughs> the second before it, I was obviously trying to score as many as I could. I almost think the keeper. So yeah. I'm thinking, oh, I'm full of confidence here. Get on the red arrows. <laughs> I'm about 40 yards out. Before I hit it, I don't know what technique I'm going for here. Smacked it. <laughs> If, if, if you ever if you ever watch it back, if you ever watch it back and you see their wall, their J Harris in the wall, just to the side of the wall, and when what when I on the first to run over it, the next one they all they all disperse on the wall. We could have passed it to about four or five different people, and we would have, we would have been in to score. But yeah, it was incredible. John, can you believe it that we actually work on that set piece and it, and it, and it actually came out like that? I mean, we spent so much, we spent so many hours, so much hours on set pieces. So, Gary Johnson was a big believer that, like, you know, it was just a great opportunity to score goals. And we did. We, we created lots of chances and we should have scored more because we had so many cards up our sleeves. And, um, yeah, that, that was just one of many, really. So, um, yeah, great. I think it's Holman, Holman got excited because in training we've been working on it around the edge of the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. During the game, 40 it's yards 50 out. 50 yards out, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I was training on the Monday where I had new boots on with pink laces in. I remember the gaffer said to me, are you taking a piss? You just bought an old cup of fish and you with a stupid free kick. And you've got pink laces in your boots. Pars, you were one of the few players not involved in that, weren't you, Pars? You were one of the few players not to actually have a run-up, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. I, was a, I was a decoy, I think, on the edge of the box, just to sort of... Yeah, I know. I think it was six or seven who ran over it and um, I was on the halfway line just watching. <laughs> just, just touching on that game though, John. Um, that was that was yeah. the game for me that where where one nil away Tramia, How well we played, dominated the game from the off. Um, that was the game for me where I knew I knew we were going to win the league. Um, it was such a statement to go there and, and win one 0 Not many teams had gone there and won. But what killed us that day as well was if you ever see it, there's a picture of me. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of doing that to the fans, but my face ain't saying that we won. Forest Green were one nil yep. down with two minutes to go. Uh, yeah, one nil down to Eastleigh, I think. Ended up winning two one. James Jennings scored, and they kept on scoring them late goals. They were like 89th minute, 90th minute. It was, it was. They just wouldn't go away. But that was the game for me where I thought, you know, we've stamped a sort of authority on the league, and you know, you know, we, we, we're going to go on and win it. But also that game, there was like unsung heroes in the team, really. So for me, like, you never, they never really get mentioned. Um, but like Rowie that day played that day, and he, he was, you know, he was absolutely fantastic. And Jay, uh, Dates as well, he was, you know, he set the goal up uh, for righty. But them, them, them two that day were just, you know, absolute sensational. Yeah. Go mention the goal righty. Then what do you remember about that one? Because you scored plenty of goals that season, but did that feel like a big one? Yeah, it's uh, obviously early on in the game. It's, I can't remember exactly. It was in the first couple of minutes. Um, 
dates, obviously, him and Rory were causing carnage in the tramway just in, midf- in midfield there. I remember dates picking it up and running sort of behind me but across the pitch. So I thought, I'm just going to yeah. spin into the box. And I've actually spanned to make a run. And uh, I've looked to see where he is and he's played it or the ball already. And it's like, come to me. So it's like instinct just to take a touch um, into the box. And no. obviously it is. Good finish. I was quite quite close yeah. to the keeper in the end to so just slotted it into the near post. But yeah, it was, uh, it was obviously early on in the game, like Stoz says, we we did dominate that game. Um, we identified that one as obviously a big game for us in the season. Um, and to put on the performance we did, um, we should have won by uh, yeah, more really. Nice. But um and in the end, in the end of the game, obviously we were hanging on a little bit, but we see the game out um, nicely. And yeah, that was a that, uh, that was a big game for us where we thought, yeah, come on, we're, we're, we're close here, keep going, and I think we can go on and win it. Yeah, because they they nicked a win at Wadden Road, aren't they? I think they were the only teams to beat, yeah. beat you at Wadden Road that year, weren't they? In the league? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, late on as well. Yeah, yeah, but big big club in <clears> like big club in the division, definitely. Definitely. And um, Dan, if we can just ask you then, obviously, you know, it's been mentioned briefly already about you arriving in, in, in January. Um, probably a, a, probably an important signing in the sense that Gary Johnson has seen you scoring goals for fun in the first half of the season in the, level, in the league. There was an opportunity, you know, when your loan ended, at, I think it was at Woking, to, to, to go to another team and you ended up going to the team that obviously won the league you'd spent the first half of the season in. So, was it just like a, you know for, for Cheltenham? It was almost like the, they needed an extra goal scorer, and, and you'd been scoring goals for fun, so it was almost the, the crucial final signing to get in January. Yeah, like that. Bill was Bill was there, and I went there. There was no guarantee. Like um, he'd scored, I think, about eleven goals. I'd scored about fourteen, so it wasn't like it was a tap in for me to just come in. I remember I'd done my knee, I'd, I'd done my medial, like in the game just before I came. So I had four weeks where. Luckily, the gaffer still said, yeah, let's do it. But I had to have a scan and check it and I've done my medial. So I had four weeks and the lads were getting on me like, is, is he going to train any smarter <laughs> or what? Like, he's come in, he's done a jolly up. Uh, luckily, like, it helped me to like, settle in because I got to know all the staff and the lads. And um, yeah, there was no sort of pressure to start with. And then obviously I was raring to go because I've been around the atmosphere, seen the way I remember... <laughs> the boys remember my first ever training session the gaffer's like I want you to come and watch training so I've stuck my raincoat on and I thought to be fair wow this training session is intense and it was the session where he got George McLennan <laughs> <laughs> took it down the line <laughs> the gaffer had George McLennan shipping balls down into the channel and the old the old uh, session had stopped it was a bit windy and George <laughs> had a bit of pressure and he was flipping it into the channel and he was kicking out the pitch and the gaffer was on him saying, can you not kick the ball? He must have took about 10 balls. He, 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 <laughs> and he, oh. and he, st- he, st- he stopped him and then George went, no, 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 one more. He went, no, I've had enough, I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I'd better be on it when I get in these sessions because this is like, it's like proper. So, uh, no, yeah, it was, a, it, was a good, it was a good way to start for me. It, like, I knew I had to be on it from the start. And then I'm, from there, obviously, it was, it was uh, you know, I used to get chances every game. Me and Wrighty would get chances every game. It was like a team where you knew, I knew, we'd go out on the pitch, we'd be on top, just had to make the right runs, get in the right areas and you'd score. I think we're going to have a good chat about the running in a minute, aren't we, Joycey? But I just want to ask a couple of questions before we move on to the running. The first is... Uh, Paz's letter and the second one is Stoz's celebration at Chester but Paz, what, I, don't, I don't think Gary Johnson was actually necessarily looking for another centre half because I think Rob Dickey had already been lined up obviously Darren Z was his first signing but you came in and did so well you ended up playing all 46 games but tell us a bit about that summer for you you know starting it without a club uh, writing a letter and then you know, obviously things have worked out brilliantly for you yeah it was um, it was a long summer it was a real tough one um, I found myself out of contract at York and I'd previously spent um, the back end of the campaign before on loan at Grimsby and um, I was hoping to get a deal there and uh, we lost in the playoff final to Bristol Rovers and um, didn't get offered anything so um, I didn't want to say I put all my eggs in one basket but um, I thought I thought I was going to end up staying at Grimsby so um, yeah I just you, you know you keep keep yourself fit you you know you and in the end I just tried to sort of take um, take control of my own destiny, if you like. Um, 
didn't have an agent, so it was a matter of um, just contacting a few clubs and Cheltenham had obviously just dropped out of the football league and um, a great club. So yeah, it was and to get a phone call back off Gary Johnson inviting me down, um, just I just jumped at the chance if you like, and um, he rang me on the Sunday. I think I went down on the Monday and um, straight into training, played a few friendlies, and then yeah, the rest is ended up playing every game, and it was probably the most consistent and best season of my career, if you like. And you, you made it quite clear in an interview with me that you didn't really want to be called Danny, so that helped with the, in terms of confusion with Danny Wright. But you, why, why do you think you picked that up? Why did everyone refer to you as Danny when you've always preferred Dan or Daniel? It's just a football thing. I think it, in, in football dressing rooms, it's, it's, I mean, on the terraces, I mean, I, I spent a large part of my career at York and I'm called Danny Parslow at York, you know, so it's... Uh, you've, been, you've, been, you've, been, you've been called a lot worse than that, yeah. trust me. I have been called a lot worse. So, um, yeah, it's just, I, I'm, I thought, new club, I'll just try and nip it in the bud and let everyone know what, <laughs> what I prefer to be called. So, um, yeah, and then, you know, as Stoll said there, I've been called all sorts, so... Yeah. Yeah. Always Dan, Dan or Daniel at, at Cheltenham, but... Stoz, I mean, we, we could pick out so many moments from the first half of the season, but there was a trip to Chester early on, <laughs> think first midweek away game. Um, you got your first goal for Cheltenham and talk us through what happened after that. It's a little, quite an unusual celebration. Yeah, no, the, the, the celebration, it, I, I think it was early on in the season and um, all the boys were talking about, you know, um, when can we get together and have a few beers and go out and stuff and <laughs> everyone wanted to see what everyone was like, you know, out, out from the like, typical training day etc um, and I think it was Amari Amari, Amari said to the, the group that I can get low on the dance floor um, <laughs> for being a stiff character like I am and not very flexible uh, quite the lads they were quite surprised um, I don't know why Downsy got involved with the celebration for because he's as stiff as me yeah. <laughs> there, was a, there was a few knees going then um, so yeah when, obviously when I scored the goal delighted my first goal but I've got to say that that night the pitch was quite uh, quite wet. They'd they'd sprayed it. But when I come to the celebration, it all it all dried. I had grass burns on my knees after. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was beyond the celebration. Yeah, I think it was that was only the fourth game of the season. I remember I was sat next to George Smith on the way back, and you were holding court at the back seat stalls. I think everyone was in stitches. Me and George were in stitches all the way back, and it just <laughs> it was just amazing how quickly the spirit. I know you'd had pre seasons together, but. It was. It was. Yeah. You felt so united so early on in the season, didn't it? Really felt. I, I just. I, I. I think you've got to. You, you've got to uh, put your hands together for the recruitment. I think. Um, I think a lot. Of, a lot of clubs do it now, and I think we've been sort of a model towards other clubs that where they're not just signing good players, they're signing good characters. So you've got to do. You know your homework on on, on the characters. Um, we had a blend of everything, um, and it, it was great. I mean, on the pitch, you know, I, I think our biggest attribute was. We had very good talkers. Um, if you look at the spine of our team, you know, it was fantastic. Dylan Phillips was like for a young lad, he, you know, he's proving what he's doing now. But great talker, Downsley, Pars, you know, great talkers. You know, myself in there. We've got Asa, Pelly. Obviously, he don't he don't stop himself. Then right in Dan up the top. So, you know, all round, especially the spine of that team, it was it was just a, a solid base of you know good communicators, good football players, and you know hard workers, um, which was key. Yeah. Dan, Dan Holman, I think, was, was your debut Dover away? Was that your first game? Yeah, yeah. Right, righty, obviously, righty scored the two in quick succession. And that, all of you played in that game, didn't you, I think? I remember James yeah, yeah. Dayton, I think, was, was pretty ill that day, but still played. Yeah. But did, did, that, did that feel like a big one, even on your debut, Dan, that, to come back and, and win in that sort of style? It was unreal, because <laughs> it was just a weird, weird weekend that... Um, we obviously stayed away. It's like it was a bit of a dour, dour place and that. Obviously sang the night before and then the boys were on a great run and I was thinking, oh no, like, uh, I remember Devadix smacked him in the top of the about not long to go. And I'm thinking, nah, like, obviously knew the gaffer a bit by then and I was thinking, this ain't what I need on the first game, like, coming to the end of, uh, end of the run, like, at first game and, um, Nothing had really happened in the game too much either, like from a personal level. And then the ending was just obviously, as we all know, unreal. Like that, it, it was brilliant. And on, on TV, I think it was on BT, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah the journey home was, was brilliant. 
we got dominated. We got yeah, we got dominated that game. We we, we shouldn't have got anything out of that game too fair. Um Acer played at centre half, I think, in the end, and he had a good game, yeah. a bit of a slip and all. Um and then obviously yeah. dates come on. But Grimes he played for Dover that game. Um yeah. and obviously being mates with him, but then obviously meeting up at Cheltenham with him as well. He 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 said in the dressing room after the game. So them to, they were having a massive fight there. I can't, I can't remember their striker's name. Little lad um, scored Ricky loads of goals. Ricky, Ricky Miller. Miller. Yeah, yeah Ricky Miller. Yeah. He was having a fight with one of the lads in the dressing room and said, and Grimes said, all I could hear was um, the song, You Don't Have to Take Your Clothes Off to Have a Good Time. We're all dancing in the shower. <laughs> I, I come out of the showers that day and had the biggest head rush ever. It was just like the adrenaline was pumping. I, I think I danced in the shower for about 40 minutes. Oh. It was incredible. <laughs> I actually remember that so vividly now. You know, oh, good day. Because Forrest Green had a game. <laughs> Forrest played or they had a game in hand and it, it meant we were sort of four points with him or something like that. They, know, but we, they played the day before, I think, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Sunday game up. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that was, a, that, was a big, that was a big victory. They were tough. They were a tough side. They had, a, they had an unusual system. Where it was a, a complete man-marking system all over the park. Um, and it worked for them, to be fair. But we had two tough games against them. We, you know, Billy scored late on, got me out of a bit of trouble at our place. We beat them 3-2. And we were 2-0 down early doors. Um, so yeah, we did it twice. One <laughs> got to got to hear from you on that one, righty, just because of the the goals, especially the winner. <clears throat> yes, yeah, um, it's remarkable, really. Obviously, there's the two late goals, probably one of the most memorable games for me personally. But um, just for that fact, but the actual game wasn't the best, um, and obviously we did get we did um, we were up against it for large parts of it. Um, but it just there's just something about us that season when. When uh, our backs were against the wall, and sort of when we went one nil down or whatever, we just we just found that extra gear. We just found whatever we needed to do to get the goal. Um, I remember when there was a certain points through the season, and um, a message got through onto the pitch. Oh, we need to score! Um, like we we knew, or we we were told what like the Forest Green score was, or whatever. And um, we were told like we need a goal, we need a goal, and um, we just all it's something installed in us that we. Just we managed. We managed to do what we needed to do to get the goals um, at the right times. Um, but yes, yeah, the, the penalty, obviously, um, I don't know why I'm up right here and there. And then the run from Holman, obviously, set up the second one. And dates, dates his shot to fall for me. I'm about two yards out now. I'm pleased with that. Nice. So yeah. I remember the celebration. Everyone's running off, and then everyone just points to the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Waste time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Paz, you had you had Asa next to you, as Estoz said. You had Asa next to you in that game. He, he obviously was more of a midfielder, but did a decent job. You had you had Downsy at various times before he got injured. He was he was the first choice next to you, and then obviously Cameron Burgess came in. Uh, Rob Dickey, a few different partners, but you you were always there. What was it like playing alongside? You know, very different characters, aren't they? Downsy, Cameron Burgess, but the defence remained as solid as ever. Yeah, I think. Um... We switched obviously to a three, I think, towards the back end of the season. And um, I think Downsy, myself and Downsy, I mean, Downsy was always the more, I don't know, the more dominant one, if you like. He was a skipper. He was the one who'd sort of um, probably, well, he, he led us and he led us really well. And I think I was quite happy just to go about my business and support and, and just and do my bit to help the team. And then I think with Downsy's serious injury, um, uh, obviously, I wouldn't say it was a time to step up, but I just think that I, I, you know, I kept doing what I was doing and sort of had to take on Cameron and and Dixon under my wing, if you like. Um, I mean, two fantastic footballers in their own right, but they were still relatively young and they were, they were gaining experience. But we had the, we were fortunate enough that they were they were learning and and Cheltenham Town were benefiting from the, you know, we we were very fortunate to have them in our group and um, great chaps, great. And I mean, the pair of them always wanted to learn and um, yeah, they were, they were a pleasure to play with. So, um, and Asa, you know, Asa is another very versatile player. He's, he's proven that, I mean, he, I know at Torquay, he's played a few games at centre half and um, he's, he's proven over, over many years, he's, he's comfortable there. So yeah, I think the squad we had that year, it didn't matter who slotted in. Um, we all knew our roles and I think that was the secret to our success and it wasn't even a secret I think Gary Johnson just he was very clear um, and we all we all went out on that pitch and we all knew exactly what everyone was was going to do you know I I knew that Stoz would do 
three quarters of my work for me because he was just in the right place at the right time. And I think that's that's what you need from a centre half. Need a good set midfielders. Centre forwards need you know good service and everything that year just um, just clicked and we all worked so hard and we thoroughly deserved everything we got that year. Yeah, Josie. It's, well, it's an interesting point you make about you know the, the times where you know a message came through from off the bench about the fact that perhaps Forest Green had scored or that you needed to score because there's obviously the, the, the common cliche in football focus on yourselves and all that sort of stuff but that suggests that they wasn't necessarily focusing on yourselves they suggest that it was you know, worrying a little bit about what your rivals were doing which of course is, was natural so when that happened did you, did you naturally feel pressure straight away or did you think no nope, we've got a score here and we're, we're going to get a goal he, he wouldn't tell um, every individual he, he, he would get a message across to either me um, or experienced lads right here, Pars themselves, Asa, keep it under the chest, under their hat a little bit. And, and you know, like the Bar- the Barrow game sticks out, Barrow away. Um, they had just scored. Uh, Barrow made it 1-1. And um, I think Forest Green were playing Wrexham. And Wrexham were leading at half-time, I think. And then um, with about 15 to go, um, the gaffer said to me, he said, this is this is the game. This is the game. This is the game. Like that, three or four times. So without saying to me, Wrexham are two up. It was you know Wrexham, Wrexham are winning this game. You know you know we've got to win the game to, to, to stamp our authority on the league if you like. And we as soon as he said it, we I told a few, and then we struggled and struggled and struggled. And you know A said he done it a couple of couple of times. Done it away at Bromley as well. Um, you know last few minutes of the game. He's so good with both feet. He's probably the best football player that I've seen you know left foot right foot so comfortable um, and the ball come out to him on his left and he you know slotted it into the, the bottom corner um, Forrest Green yet again scored two late goals I think that game and, and you know, it was 2-2 in the end um, but that was a game as well like like you say um, that you know took us further away from from um, you know our rivals I think going yeah, back that... sorry John sorry Dan uh, yeah, yeah I, I think going back to the question about pressure I think I think Gary Johnson we all knew from the start that what the objective was. So, yeah, no, yeah. and it was so drilled into us. I think Scott said we were brainwashed, and we, I think we were. We all sort of we spent hours and hours in meeting rooms and watching opposition. And his his language, I think, just sort of subconsciously would just get into your head. And I think the likes of the senior lads just showed the responsibility, allowed the younger boys just to express themselves. Um, and then when you've got natural goal scorers like the two we had up top, and then you've know Morgs and Billy and the creativity, it was just it was just always you just knew that something would would always just happen, um, and we all had that belief. So yeah, I think pressure can be it can be seen as a negative, but I think we were so confident and prepared. I think we just flipped it round and we saw it as something to thrive on. Did he? You never really slipped up because once you got to the top, once you reeled Forest Green in, you never really looked like you're going to let it slip. But was there ever a moment where he lost it because he thought you'd you'd let you'd let a lead slip or you you didn't lose many, but you know you'd lost a couple? Did he did he ever get really angry Brain. or was it more just intense in a positive way? Brain tree away um, was a big one for me, but also um, he didn't lose it. But Welling away, well, Welling I hadn't won for 24 games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my God, honestly, what a game! He sub, I think he sub Rowie after about half hour. Yeah. It was just like everything was, everything was we, we were on top of the game. We were, ne- we were never going to lose the game ever. And then in the ninety fourth minute, Welling decided to score, and <laughs> honestly, just couldn't believe it. George, we took kick off. Yeah, George McLean scored yeah. originally. It was offside. It weren't. Yeah. And then we took we took kick off. Went back to I think Pars or someone like that. They smashed it forward. I was going to flick it on. Who's Dan pushed me out of the way, and he, he lashed one in. It was just like. But then we got in the dressing room after the game and the Welling dressing room, you have to walk through their dressing room and the referee room before you get to yours. And I can remember looking at the gaffer and he was just sitting on the ice box and he said, have you ever seen the Kevin Keegan moment when they score against, Liverpool score against him? <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was hung over his ice box and he went, someone else do it because I just can't do it anymore. Like, uh, and it was, and it, 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 there were the moments where you think he's had enough because like we should we should have won that game and then I think me and Munzi were sort of you know having a bit of a go and um, I think that's what he did well as well he let the players have enough say where you know they could get the points across and when it needed to be nipped in the buddy he did that as well he, he was 
with the young lads, it, it, reverse psychology was one of his best points for me with his young lads. Uh, for example, Munji or Billy could be having a great game and they'll be thinking, they'll be talking to each other as they're coming in, you know, done that well, done that well. And it'll give them a bit of a rollicking and they'll be thinking, you know, go back out the second half and we've got to prove him, prove him right, uh, prove him wrong. Um, so I think reverse psychology was a, was a big factor um, with a lot of the young lads. Yeah, to, 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 he, did, he did well. Was like you knew, like the boy said, like we knew the aim for the season was to win. Yeah, yeah. You knew if he was fuming, he, he weren't putting it on. Like if he was angry, he was angry. If he said you're in Sunday, you're in Sunday. <laughs> A lot of yeah. guys, whatever they say things, and you're like, yeah, right. you get a text saying, yeah, boys, you know, lost. You knew. If you ain't winning that game, you're going to have a long week ahead. I know for me, I think, I'd always think like, we put so much effort on the pitch because you knew what the week could be like if you didn't win. <laughs> you're thinking, yeah, I <laughs> four pitch runs. <laughs> <laughs> I, can remember, I can remember the week you told right in Billy to get a new club. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the league. Top of the league. <laughs> Billy, go get a new club. And Billy kept some, Billy kept some texting right. He said, "We'll go in Monday. And we'll prove a point. We'll prove a point." Right? He said, "I think you've got to get new clubs, mate." <laughs> oh, Honestly, oh, there were Fantastic. a few young lads in there, weren't there? There were, there were a few young lads really just starting out, like Dylan, George, Bart, Barch, um, Munns, Waters. Did, did they yeah. handle that all right? Because you, you lot, you lot, you weren't old, but you, you'd all been around a little bit, late twenties or thirty. Um, yeah, and Dan, you, you Dan, you mid twenties, I think, when you came in, or maybe just the early twenties. But those lads, nineteen, twenty, did they handle that all right? That sort of intensity. I think there was like times, like any young player. I think being in that environment, if I was like young, yeah, even when I was there, like it, it was, sometimes it was tough. Um, but I think it made them all the, the lads there. They're all strong characters, like Bill Munsey, very confident in their own selves. Um, I think, yeah, they were a massive part of the team, like huge part of the team. Even when, you know, when I came in and didn't play as much, they were still massive parts of the team. And I think, like I said, like Stoz said earlier, all the characters were, there wasn't really a, a weak link in the team. Uh, like Bill got absolute dogs abuse at times, but he took it on and definitely became so much stronger from it, like in his career, in his mindset. Um, even when you saw him go into League Two, like um, he was like a different man, like compared to compared. So I think it the whole atmosphere, whatever situation you were in in your career, it just helped you um, become become better on on and off the pitch. Really, I feel, I, I feel the young lads were the key really toward towards the end because um, you know for me from my experience, obviously the closer we got the more nervous I got at getting over the line because I'd been so close before and obviously never played in the Football League. I don't know if right is the same. But the younger lads hadn't ever had that fear. So they just played the game. I can remember some of them games, we were, towards it, we were awful. We were absolutely awful in some of the games. I remember Gates said at home, Gates said yeah. at home, nil-nil. Yeah. And it was uh, talky at home. Munzi pulls the strike out of the bag. and you know, we, At times, we, we, we were absolutely desperate. But our game sort of changed, especially especially mine. You, you couldn't you couldn't let the younger lads show it's affecting you because obviously you're leading the team, etc. Like, and you don't want it to go on to them. But at times it was just the fear would sit in. You know, I wouldn't get as far forward, or I wouldn't try a risky pass. Or do you know what I'm saying? It's where the young lads would just they'll just try and create and try and create all the time. And Billy didn't care if he missed one; he'll, he'll have another strike. And that's just that's what they brought. And I thought they were the key towards the end. I thought they really were. Yeah, apart from Dan, apart, the, apart from Dan, obviously scoring every every four games, every go, uh, four <laughs> goals every game. <laughs> I just think Lots we're of... all we're all there for each other. Um, if there was anyone going through a difficult part of a, of a game or <laughs> during, during the week of training, we we we'd all there be there for each other, and we'd get each other through any difficult times throughout the whole season, really. Um, but it's the same the flip side of the coin. We were, we'd give each other a stick and. We'd have a laugh with each other and, and dig each other out as well at the same time. Um, but that just togetherness of the whole group, it just we're all pushing in the, the same direction. And uh, yeah, we just all went through it, it all rode every wave together. And um, yeah, that's, that's how it helped really. Do you think there was a, a really good balance to the recruitment in the sense that, you know, Stars 
Wrighty, uh, Dan, um, Amari Morgan Smith, loads of conference experience. And then you've got these lads coming in like Dylan Phillips and so on, who we've never played a single conference game. It almost was the perfect blend between the sort of the young lads and also the older lads who've played literally 200 games in the league, who know what you have to do to go and win away at, um, you know, yeah. at, at like a, a Welling United or, or a Woking or something like that. I do, uh, yeah, I, I do personally. Um, I think Dan um, just touched on it a minute ago um, about the younger lads and the dressing room, etc. But I don't think the younger lads have ever had a dressing room like it because if you look at people like myself, Downsy, Pars, Wrighty, we've been in dressing rooms like, I can remember my, the first dressing room I was at Tamworth and it had like, um, not name dropping, but Tommy Johnson, Nicky Sornby, Merson, A.D. Smith, Scott Stamps. I got battered every day. Every day I got battered. The things that weren't, I shouldn't even get battered for. And I was just like, what's going on here? Do you know what I mean? It was like, and that made, like, like Dan said about Billy, um, it, it made me grow. And then, you know, by the time I was 20, 21, I'm battering older players that are coming to, coming to the dressing room. Do you know what I mean? Just a bit of banter and it should, gives you that confidence. Um, but yeah, I think it was a per- perfect, perfect blend. I think there was some of the young lads were a little bit frightened of the older lads to start off with. Do you know what I mean? In terms of where they're being characters and you know are they going to like me and get on and do you know what I mean? But I just think that you know they're all they're all very, very good players, but you know they're, they're great people as well. And you know that just shows that we we all still stay in touch every now and then. And um, you know it, it was just a fantastic time to be fair. I don't think anyone had a life though. No one had a life. <laughs> yeah. I did. I mean, I've been at any any of the club I had of you know like now, you know, love my life now. At time with the family, etc. But when I was at Cheltenham, it was that, that, it was just that was it. I can remember writing the fixtures down in the kitchen and I had them on the wall. And the missus was like, "What are you doing?" And there were the fixtures, and that, that's just the way it was. It was just I everything was just based around winning the league. Hundred percent. All right, you know, like now you've been different clubs and stuff. You go into a club and you just like when it's a bad thing because you think. Like they're like, yeah, we're going to win the league. We're going to... And then you're thinking, nah. You, yeah, it's no one near as You don't know what it takes. Like, like yeah. you, you might think you are, but like, seriously, there's going to be people that are on it. Um, yeah. I think you definitely, it's good for us, our experience now, because you realise what it takes. It probably did take a little bit more that season because Forest Green were so on us. And I'm sure people have won the league with less commitment, but it just makes me laugh when, you know, there's some standards are slipping and thinking, no, that 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 will cost you. And it's hard. It's hard to say to them as well, Dan, isn't it? Do you yeah. Know you know, you know, when people ah, come in and people are do, people are doing people are doing things in the dressing room, and you're thinking, hang on, what's going on here? Yeah. But you can't say it because yeah. it lo- looks like, well, you've done this, you've done that, but yeah. like you say, they don't know what it takes. And... and you feel like you're talking about it all the time. You're like, no, well, yeah. When, when, when we when when we did this, and I'm like, oh shit, sure. like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I walk. I I walk in every day with metal around my neck still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great I time. just want to touch on the, on the recruitment side of it. Obviously, the, the eleven debutants on the first game of the season, first game of the season gets a lot of mentions. But uh, with obviously the two injuries near January, Morgan um, Amari, um, Morgan Smith, and then Downsy. Obviously, two recruitments of us, Holman and Cam Burgess that came in, it was seamless really in, the, in them coming in and just nothing changed. Um, and it just you, had, you, had, you, had, you had Flatty as well, didn't you? Dylan Phillips went down as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he'd actually done really well for us um, when he came in and probably one of his best few games he's had, isn't it, I'd say. <laughs> it was just, it was his cycling shorts he wore away at Braintree. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every time we lost the game, um, but every time I turned around, we kept on seeing him put a flat in and cycling shorts. Yeah, <laughs> Unbelievable. So, yeah. It's like obviously the recruitment that throughout the whole the, the whole se- the year got is was perfect, yeah. Cranston really. came in in January as well, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, bloody hell! He, so yeah, so it's all everyone. I'd like to have a chat about the um, the Grimsby home game. I quite like. I think it was a it was a big one, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Stoz, I think you, I think you went off injured um, in the first half, didn't you? Yeah, I had a I had a back injury. Um, the sciatic nerve was playing up. Um, I think it was playing too many games or carrying Pelly, one of the, one of the two. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I had a back injury. And the ref, the ref let me off the pitch, um, and we had a throw in. In, the, in Cran- I was just about to take a throw, in, so I just lay down on the pitch. So then the, the game couldn't restart. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I come off and. Uh, as soon as I come back into the dressing room, I heard the crowd go up 
Um, and obviously, we, we scored the free kick. Um, but it was worrying times because we lost to Wrexham on the... Yeah, was it? Monday, wasn't it? On the Monday, 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 yeah. Um, and then we were playing first again against Grimsby. We lost, we lost to Wrexham. We should have won it. We should, we actually should have won it. We had a chance just before Cam, but Rowie got down the side. We took a quick free kick. He got in, pulled it back to Cam Burgess, and he spooned it wide from about three yards. And then they went up the river and they scored the last kick of the game. So the coach journey back was, you know, it was a tough one to take. Um, but I think after that game, Forest Green only picked up, I think, five points. I think. Um, so there's nothing to worry about in the end, anyway. <laughs> Talk about how good um, how good Danny Wright was against Grimsby. Yeah. Incredible. Um, I, yeah, I've never... For me, that was one of the best centre-forward performances I've ever seen. Um, he just... He was just, like, a leader. Um, I, I just think he, he just set the tone. And, like, he, he did it all season. But that, that game in particular, I, I remember his goals and uh, the importance of the match. Um, yeah, just big, big night that really was. Pars, write a letter for me for to a few clubs. <laughs> Righty, that the goal, the, the, the third, the clincher, you know, it was all over then, wasn't it? 77th minute, 3 1. Yeah, then just stumped on his back for good, good measure. Uh, just, just already stumped his back for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, right, yeah, okay. it's obviously, obviously, it probably shouldn't have been on the pitch. Um, so I can't, I can't even explain. What was going through my head is the elation <laughs> of which we've, we've scored. Um, obviously, I uh, bullied the centre half um, and then laid the ball off the st- uh, Pelly, and the keeper was just laying on the floor in front of me. So I don't know. Adam, Adam, don't worry about it, mate. Now, Late. Every now and again. We've, we've all been there, mate. Don't worry. We've all been there. With yeah, we'll come on to the Lincoln game in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, and obviously, like the third goal, it was. Um, it killed the game off for us, and it was we were kind of home and dry. seeing the game, seeing the game out after that. And obviously, I remember watching because it was on the TV. We were watching the replay, replay of the goals in the change rooms after, and we were just like, "This is a fire drill." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, that was a that was a point where well, we knew we had, we'd we'd won it pretty much. But, um, yeah. Yeah, it was a, obviously a big game for us, and yeah, when we look back on, there's a there's a big uh, mm, great game for us. Yeah, Dan, you were playing up front with Righty. And Paz says it's one of the best centre forward displays he's seen. What was it like partnering up front that day? Yeah, like, I was just thinking, like you, you forget how big them games were. Like mm-hmm. it, it was rammed. It was like intense. We knew we had to win, and you had to be on it because they were a good side as well. Um, they dropped off a bit, I think, just at that stage, but they were they were decent. And I, I remember just being shattered. Like, I didn't have a goal in me. Like, I was, you know, when you're just running all game. So, Brighty, I needed him more than ever that game. And he was there to bag the, bag the goals in the right in the right place. Getting the ice bath afterwards, thinking, no, I can't, I can't keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just get so emotionally involved in every game as well. Yeah. Like, you're like, Especially near the end, you're like, mm. yeah, he was unreal all season. Like, great to play up front with because um, he had, a, you know, a bit of everything. Like, obviously, for a big man, he's still good on the floor, still quick, strong, good in the air. He had, he had everything, to be fair. So, it was, it, it was a perfect combo. It's like Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> the fat one now. <laughs> so two two games later it was Halifax and you know everyone will remember Dan your two goals one from the penalty spot one killed in to, to officially clinch the title what was that day like for you for you know just a little bit from each of you on what your your memories of that game and what happened afterwards uh, well, go on I'll start it then um, before the game obviously I had my back injury um, but obviously I was starting I went out to do the warm up um, I started an autograph, went across the line, and I felt my back go. And uh, so I, I said to Gal, my back's gone here, so go and get another physio bed quick. And this is no joke. I'm right, right, <laughs> yeah, knows I'm this, this, is the, this is the truth. I went into the dressing room, and there's two people in the dressing room. You got the kit man, Jim, and Gaffer. And Gaffer said, What's up? I said, My back's gone. He's gone, You'd be all right to play, though, because that would have been the 46th game I'd played in a row in, in the league. I said, yeah, I think so, but I think Gab's just going to give it a bit of a stretch off or, you know, a bit of a rub. I know I weren't right. I know I shouldn't be playing. 
I sat on the bed and Gav was still outside. He was coming in. He was collecting a few things up. And while I was waiting, Gary Johnson came into the dressing room and started stretching my back off for me. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was an incredible scene. It was an incredible scene. <laughs> I actually thought he had high, higher qualifications than Crowey. <laughs> he's going, he's going, get it across your body. Get it across your body. <laughs> Can we crack it? Can we crack it? It was incredible. Um, but yeah, I got, he, he, I actually, I couldn't pass, I couldn't pass the ball. I managed to get to half time and um, he dragged me off without even telling me, he pulled me off. Um, but I, that day was just a case of, you know, delaying the inevitable, really. And the, the goal, the one that he's bent in, Dan, I've watched it time and time again. It's just way, way above National League level. It was incredible. He did it all season to be fair when he come that, that sort of goal. That was his, that was his forte, weren't it? Uh, but yeah, you know, the, the, the scenes afterwards were, I can remember running onto the pitch and everyone celebrating. I was out of breath within 20 seconds, couldn't breathe. <laughs> Honestly, it was just, everyone was mobbing you on top and, um, but if I could do the whole thing again, I'd, I think I'd, I'd take a back seat and just watch it all because the weekend went, went way too fast for me. Yeah, right. So you were watching from the sidelines, weren't you? As Dan got the job done in the first half, so before Stoz went off, the job was done, really, wasn't it? But what what was it like watching that one? I think Pelly was was there as well, wasn't he? So there is Pelly was injured, uh, Downsy obviously injured, and myself. Obviously suspended from the Grimsby game. I think Pelly was uh, Pelly was suspended when he got sent off against Guys League, didn't he? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's kind of um, a bit surreal for me. Obviously, not being part of the game, but obviously <clears throat> um, being a part of the season, a big part of the season. So it's like when we actually won the league, I was I was a bit disappointed to be on the sidelines. To be fair, but obviously my own fault. Um, so it's like. Um, so it's uh, we were looking at the forest green scores as well, and did they lose that day? Was it they lost? Drew, I think they drew. They yeah, drew. They drew, yeah. Um, so uh, we were uh, able to keep an eye on the scores. So obviously, when we when the full time whistle came along, we we knew the job was done, and well, Holman obviously done the job anyway. Um, and we were running onto the pitch, but obviously we had to be quick because the fans were obviously beating us to. So we had to get to the middle of the pitch pretty quick. Um, and yeah, it's just carnage. The whole weekend, carnage. Um, the last two weeks of the season was sort of a, a, a big celebration, really. Um, topped off with that night and then two weeks later when we lifted the trophy and then the, the awards night as well. Nice to get it done with a couple of games to spare as well. <laughs> yeah, the awards night. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember from that game, the... Um, like Gaffer was great with like his presentations and that, and before the game he did a big PowerPoint on like the history, like going from everyone nearly losing their jobs and all that, and like yeah, more up for a game in terms of like just get out. We always had like that um, two. If we scored two, it was game over. Like we knew. We yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Gaffer yeah. always spoke about we don't concede. We get two goals, we win the game. So to get them so early. When we got them, it was almost like we were so confident. It was like cigar on. We've, we've won it. It's, incre- it's, inc- it's incredible how, how much football we played and how well we were on that pitch. The pitch was absolutely horrendous if you actually look back at the games. And, yeah. you know, although it kept us up the year after. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <lost exactly>. yeah. <laughs> no, that, was, that was the Indian that kept us up. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to come on to the awards night at some point, but Paz, what are your memories of that day to get it done? And, you know, players were being lifted up, weren't they, on the people on the fans' shoulders and amazing, amazing scenes. Yeah, it was brilliant. Like Dan said, we scored so early. It, 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 we were so, we all just knew that we'd done it and so enjoyable uh, that, that 90 minutes for me. It was brilliant. And then the scenes after, just memories you'll never, ever forget. And, you don't want them to end like just these memories that you share with your teammates and you spent so much time together working so hard and then the time it's just almost like my god like the relief like you've, you've done it all those hours and hours of hard work um and yeah just just to just to finally get over the line and the last two weeks of the season like like Dan Alman said there um training was just brilliant it was such a relaxed atmosphere um, going in every day, just bigger smiles. Hold on, boys. 
Oh, it's happy NHS, haven't you? Oh, yeah. He's a clock. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's not his birthday. I'm at, the, I'm at the patio doors, mate. <laughs> well done, mate. Sorry, we didn't think of that, Joyce, did we? <laughs> We've timed it wrong a bit. Cheers, writing. Um, but I talk, talk, talk about timing it well, though. It is, I think, I think it is four years to the day since the actual final uh, victory over over Lincoln, of course, to to actually lift the title. Um, four years to the day. Time does fly quickly. Um, you know, celebrations like you mentioned already were were, were pretty good. Um, you know, what are your memories of of that game? Because, like you said, the title was done. Was it just a case of going out there, almost enjoying your football for 90 minutes and then knowing that you had a big prize to pick up at the end? No, it wasn't because he put pressure on us. He wanted the 100 points. Yeah, it, it won, miles, all, although Paz says about, about training being relaxed, which it was, and it was obviously a relief that we won the league. He, he wanted the 100 points and he, he would not let us you know, drop off. And what wound me up that day, I was a little bit wound up, obviously, circumstances later on, you know, testified to this, but Lincoln didn't give us a guard of honour. They didn't do anything. They, didn't, mm. they showed us no respect. Um, the game was quite naughty. Every time there was a tackle, they, they tried to lay in on one of us. Um, and I, I just thought they, they, they just showed us a proper lack of respect um, but from the get-go. So, a, a few of us were wound up for that game. Um, and it, it just showed out, you know, we, we dominated them in the end. It was, I think it was a 3-1 in the end. Yeah. Yeah, um, I just, yeah we, we just ran over the top of them. But, yeah, it was, it was the 100 point. He wanted the 100 points. So, um when it was all when it, the third goal went in, it was then it was time to relax and um, yeah, party. And Dan, you got the last goal of, this, of that game, didn't you? And it, it sort of showed when Cheltenham won the conference in '99, they had three games left and, and lost two and drew one. But when you won the league that season, like Stoll said, he wanted the hundred. You won at Macclesfield and you got the job done against Lincoln as well. So no let up. I think the gaffer also you, was straight on to us saying like, I need to know who's got. The ability to be here next year. Because everyone was on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. he spoke to some of us, but it's a he was on to us. Like, let's see who's got, like, who's you know, he had us. He had us by the, by the yeah. in, you know, whatever they call it. And uh, <laughs> we all believe with you, with, that, with you, it'll be a short and curly with you. Yeah, <laughs> we all believe exactly what um, what he said because um, everything he said, had, you know, he'd got us to that point. We've won the league. We're in a great position in our careers at the time. So when he said, you know, don't let off because I'm looking for next year, we were thinking, all right, OK, I better, better keep going then. Um, I remember that game as well. We was walking out and uh, I think I was one behind to get the golden boot. But obviously, with two weeks before, so I was finding myself having a little, like, midweek. It was a nice weather. I was thinking I was having a nice midweek cider and that. Like, now and again, I'm thinking... I've got, I still got to get the golden boot here or, and then someone told me that Amon weren't playing that game so I thought right I've got to get a goal and then I remember the gaffer saying give it get the ball to him yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> sound like Jimmy Grimble <laughs> give it to Gordon give it to the bloody Gordon <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it was a good it was a good day it was a good day yeah and, and Dan you, I think I don't know what your contract situation was but I think Pelly was the only player who actually came in on a two year wasn't he all the rest of you I think was pretty much Get the job done, get that year done, and then and then talk about the future. Yeah, that was everyone. Everyone, everyone I know of was on a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But stores and righty. I, I, I think that was good though, John. I think that, that that gave us, you know, no no one could relax a little bit. You know what I mean? It was kept you on the front foot and knowing you've got to earn something for next year. I can remember him saying a comment in one of his meetings. I don't know if you boys can, but um, he said about imagine not imagine telling your kids. That all you ever did was play in the national league. I said, how embarrassed would you be? I can remember him saying it, and I, look, I looked at him that day and I thought, I obviously didn't I didn't have any kids at the time. I thought that's absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible to to say that. But it, it, then again, it brainwashed people, and it was a bit of reverse psychology, and it, it you know it worked, it worked. You know, you're doing it for your families, aren't you, etc. And um, another one, you know, would you shoot your mother if she's standing in the way, or you know, do you know what I mean, and stuff like that. It was just <laughs> yeah, stuff kids, yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. gun to your kids' yeah. head. That was the one. <laughs> Someone's got a gun to your kids' head. What will you do? Uh, I don't know, mate. Probably it's not a clue. Let's go with Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some yeah. good times. Some good times. What do you yeah, and Wrighty, you, you haven't. Sorry, Joyce. I was just gonna. 
you haven't, you haven't been in the league before. Uh, Paz, you played in the league. I think, Dan, you'd had a taste of it, hadn't you, in the league? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the stars and Wrighty, at the ages you were, I think, 29 and 30. It was your birthday, Stars, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and Wrighty, was it extra special knowing that you'd be going into the league for the first time? Although it would have been a great day for everyone, for you two, to have never been there before. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I've got, uh, gone right, um, gone right. Go on, you go, mate, you go. Nah, it's obviously, for me personally, <clears throat> the whole sort of when I signed for Histon, we won the Conference South and I'd have like nine years, I think, till the Cheltenham season in the conference and I was obviously finished with 98 points with Wrexham in his second um, with Histon we finished third I think um, and lost in the playoffs so there was a few times I was thinking oh, is it ever going to happen and obviously the older you get you do start to wonder if if it's going to happen um, but so when it did happen obviously it was a it's quite emotional obviously the awards dinner I nearly broke down but he's on the speech so I was like <laughs> you can prove how much it meant to me and, and not the family really because the like Stoz touched on it, you didn't have much of a life outside of the season, uh, the football. Um, and your family's felt that probably quite quite hard at times. So to to win the league for them as well and to sort of, for, to, it to all mean something at the end of it, um, for it all to be, all to come to like the, the pinnacle of, a, of the Lincoln game, lifting the trophy, it was a, yeah, it was a special time. Um, a lot of emotion and then a lot of relief um, and a lot of beers drank as well at the end of it. It was actually ridiculous, right, saying that. Like, I remember I used to live in Cheltenham, obviously. You'd go to the shop, like, you'd feel like Gaffer was around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was be like, you go to the shop, whatever, and always you come up on Saturday. Like, we didn't go out much anyway. Like, we weren't really like a squad that was on the booze or anything. But even if you went with your missus and had a glass of, you'd be thinking, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> had this hold on us, we were all like, I remember him saying to me, I remember when I signed, he said, where do you live? I said, uh, I said Coventry because it's, uh, it's, I thought it was a little bit closer. He went, if, he said, if you live over 45 minutes away, he said, you have to move down. He said, how far do you live away? I said, oh, 40. I live one hour 20. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, going back, to the, going back to the day, John, it was just, um, and obviously the Football League experience, it, it, yeah, I mean, I turned down a couple of chances when I, in, in my mid twenties to you know jump into the football league with different teams, um, and I turned them down. It didn't sit right with me at the time. So to finally do it, like right, you said, the older you get, you think have I made the right decision, um, etc. But to finally do it was yeah, it was an incredible feeling for you know not not just for me but for the families etc. Um, just to play at better grounds, you know, play with a different ball, and um, I mean I started in the conference when I was sixteen, so it it, it was a uh, it was a long road in the conference and still is so yeah. um, finally, finally a, give your kids something to be proud about <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, a, that, that's the thing now yeah he'll look at me he'll go league, league 2 what was that league 2 that's what he'll do but yeah so no, it was great it was a, it was a great time and, and you know, fortunate to play it playing it and that was my aim my, my, my aim was playing the football league you know I did it and I'm hoping to have you know another stint in it at some point disappointed it weren't last year but um, yeah, hopefully, yeah, you know, one day can be an hour again. And there was the open top bus parade, obviously. Um, can't remember it, can't remember it. <laughs> we weren't asked, apparently, there was. Then. That'd be I can't, I'm joking, <laughs> but that must have been a nice day in the sense that you didn't have to worry about winning a football match, you, you just literally you had to just worry about literally the, the you know the photographs out of it, enjoying it with your mates, and that, and just the whole. Well, I don't, that's right, I don't think it was that easy, that's right. <laughs> he, he had a Christian, I think. He had a Christian. He had yeah. to get back in. So yeah, basically, so it was uh, obviously Stoz's birthday was that night. We all, were, uh, well, a few of us with the, with the misses, um, we all booked on a table, didn't we, Stoz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we were all out with the girls um, the Saturday night. Uh, I ended up getting home at five in the morning with the misses. <laughs> misses got uh, it too. We, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but we, me and me and Lise were godparents to um, Frankie, um, a, a godson, to, to a christening on the Sunday morning at half ten. So we were like, oh my God. So she's, I've got my suit and that on, ready for this christening. Gone there, drove straight from the christening to the awards bus, um, <laughs> uh, the, the, the bus, the tour, and then obviously straight from the bus to the awards dinner. So it was a pretty... 
mental weekend, and I can't really remember how we done it all. But obviously, and you still owe me, you still owe me a pair of trousers from the awards yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> pretty sure you owe me a pair over the years as well. <laughs> Class. I remember the lad singing Paz's song on the bus going down the high street, and uh, it was a good turnout, wasn't it? From Cheltenham did come out to salute what you'd done, which was something pretty special, really. It was brilliant, John. I mean. I think it was um, to see all those supporters in the streets and to share, you know, um, it, it just shows how powerful football is. I think, we, you know, we're all in this lockdown and people are desperate to, to get football back because they see it as some sort of release and some something to sort of look forward to. But it's, um, it's it means so much to so many people and um, obviously there's far more important things going on at the minute, but that um, the days like that, memories like that will never be forgotten. And it's great to look back on and um, feel very fortunate that um, I've, you know, I, I was part of this Cheltenham Town team. And um, like I said, never, ever forget it. Never. And we've got the top, top scorer in the division here. We've got the top scorer for Cheltenham. We've got the Players' Player of the Year. We've got the Supporters' Player of the Year. And we've got the guy that was captain for most of the well, second half of the season and, and joint joint lifter of the trophy. So, where where would it where would that that season rank for all of you among your you know best days of your career? I think I said earlier on, John. I think personally, it was probably the most consistent I've I've played. I think I um it was the the toughest and the most and the hardest and um from a personal level, I I was away from my wife and um, spent a lot of time in the car but as soon as you, you got to the training ground or on the football field it was it was brilliant everything just clicked and the team spirit the morale the everything um, just Ill. it hasn't been topped and obviously I've, I've now retired so for me that was by far the best best year of my career Yeah, same as me for sure. Like I think you don't you don't you don't realise when you're in it how good like Cheltenham, what a lovely place to live. Like unbelievable compare. You could be all over the country of football in, you know, crappy digs and unbelievable town, place, people are all lovely, and then you're winning games, you're playing well, but when you're in it, you don't really realise like how good you've got it and you step out and you go to different clubs and you look back at your other clubs and stuff, even take away from winning the league, like all the lads, we all lived in the town pretty much all together. Um, the young lads, the older lads were pretty local, like we said, so no one shot off. Um, and then obviously top it off with a win and it, it yeah, 100% best, best football-wise and personal-wise. For me as well, it's um, the best career uh, best season of my career um, personally obviously I scored the most amount of goals that season that I have um, and the, an important thing as well for getting to the 100 point mark as well obviously I finished with 98 with Wrexham um, and going into the Lincoln game um, obviously I didn't win the league with Wrexham so to go into the Lincoln game I wanted to finish more on more points to prove like I was better than the year where I didn't win it if that makes sense so so it's important for me, obviously, to get a more uh, better points tally, and um, and yeah, and, and the memories of the of the squad we had and the and the, uh, the day, <laughs> yeah, and obviously this little boy being he in the came along the 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 yeah. <laughs> Good on Ronnie, lad. <laughs> bit, bit, Hello. How are you, fellas? Got a very distinctive middle oh, name, hasn't he, as well, Righty? Yeah. What's your What's your name, mate? He'd be struggling Ronnie if he was number 12, wouldn't he? Ronnie boy. Yeah. Ronnie Panorama. I've had yeah. the same now about Ronnie 29. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but obviously, personally, it was um, it was uh, obviously a big a big season for, for us all, but my, the best one in my career, personally, and as a collective as well, yeah, definitely. No, for me, for me, John was um, just echoing some of the boys' uh, comments, but, you know, it, it's been the most intense um you know, if I look back at other clubs now, probably hey, why cool. you're in it, like Dan Holman just said, oh, it's probably the least enjoyable at the time because everything's so on the edge all the time and, like you say, intense. 
Um, but I think when, you know, you sit back now and um, it probably happened when I, I retire, when you sit back and you look and think, you know, I, I'm delighted that, you know, we, we deserve to win it. That was the thing, we deserve to win it, um, you know, and get Football League status. Um, so for me, yeah, just to obviously make the grade and get, get into the Football League was fantastic. Um, but also, um, it's what football throws up, meeting great people. Um, and, you know, them, them friendships will hopefully go on for, you know, a long, long time. Um, and that's the best thing about football, staying in touch with people that you, you least expect to. Or we, we all achieved it together. And, you know, majority, you know, for example, I don't speak to Dan Holman every day or Paz every day, but they could pick the phone up any time. And likewise, and I feel confident to do that with them. Um, and I think that's what it brought us together. And, you know, to achieve together was fantastic. Did you all go on the trip? End of season. Did, Rain did you for three go? days. Wet. Apart, very, very apart, wet. Apart from George McLennan, because he had a two-week, <laughs> he booked a two-week holiday in the season to go to Mexico with his missus. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good job we weren't in the playoffs because he wouldn't have been there. <laughs> so yeah, we all, um, we all, we all went. It was whether, freezing. Did you have a choice of whether to go away pre-season or end of season celebration, or did I did I make that up? Well, Stoz has got an apartment in Magaluf, so we all chose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's no, there's no chance he was waiting to go for pre-season. There's not a chance. Yeah, not a chance. I said to Downsy, book Magaluf, and he booked the weekend where it was torrential rain. Honestly, it was it was a joke. Honestly, I took a, I took a puffer jacket and wore it all weekend. We were in the minibus <laughs> looking out the window, going, "Oh no, look, look, it's brightening up." <laughs> oh no, I can remember you were behind me going, "Nah, Stoz, come on, our faith, our faith." I, I was going, "Nah, mate." <laughs> That was terrible. Game's gone, mate. <laughs> For a ginger, I do love the sun. We were watching the bloody playoffs in the bar oh, yeah. and lifting it down. It was terrible. Mad, mate. Mad. <laughs> but it was, it, we got pars on the drink, anyway, drinking that naughty pint. <laughs> Plain sight. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great times. Good times. Cranston got the worst of it, didn't he? Yeah. T- yeah. Tied to a lamppost. <laughs> Uh, you can't even speak about most of it, but it's bloody unbelievable. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> Are there any stories well, from the, uh, the, the either that trip or the the awards night that you know that that, that you can go public? Oh, with? mate, one of the funniest the the, <laughs> the awards night. Where Ace, uh, listen to this. So we was uh, obviously all getting a bit rowdy on the on the dance floor, and so well, me and Wright were. Um, every time Wright is out for some reason, he tries to rip an item on my clothing. So um, <laughs> I thought I repaid a favour. So my tie was already ripped off, by the way. His tie, I did it in about four hundred knots, and like trying to pull it behind. <laughs> anyway, I bent, I bent, I bent down to get low again, like the Chester celebration. <laughs> and right, his size ten, Copa Mundial, come behind him, and caught and caught me right where it hurt. And that was the end of my night. Lost me head, lost me head with the misses. <laughs> I, it was about about three in the morning, paralytic. Walking down the uh, corridor to the room, went into the room. I said to I said to the uh, missus, "That's me. I, I've gone. That's me done. Done. He's done me head in. He wound, he wound me right up. He's done me. He's hurt me." So she was trying to calm me down, and I put my track suit back on. Took my suit off. I put my trackie back on, like Cheltenham trackie. <laughs> and as I come out the door with my suitcase, all the lads were coming around the corner, and Asa went to me, "Where are you going? You got a game?" <laughs> 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 honestly, it was brilliant. Honestly, but I was I was sleeping next door to the gaffer's. Uh, I think I think Pete was next door to me, or uh, the gaffer's mother-in-law, or something. And my suitcase was going against the wall. It was it was carnage. And uh, <laughs> he caught in the morning. And he went, bloody hell! I don't know what was going on last night. <laughs> there was all sorts of banging. I said, oh, I think we've got kids next door to us down here. They're, they're at it all night. I could hear it as well. <laughs> 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 oh, funny times, man. Funny times. Someone wrapped up a bill on uh, Cranston, wasn't it? Cranston left early to go to his room, and everyone just put red wine on his bill. He got, he got down, he got down from the reception in the morning. It was like three hundred quid. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, three hundred quid. <laughs> Class. But yeah, that was uh, that was about it, really. And then we were trying to get people to sign the contracts the night the gaffer was. <laughs> 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 like four, 400 quid less. Yeah, God knows what we signed that night. Woke up in the morning, really. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Great times, good memories. You know, Dan and Dan, and Dan Parslow and Holman, you haven't said much about the trip yet. Have you, uh, is there anything oh, you want to come back they with? Were, yeah. They were quiet. They were quiet. They were uh, thinking about the next season we were. Yeah, I was doing yeah. shot <laughs> <laughs> I went and dodging the rain, getting my you know, fast feet working and 
Yeah. <laughs> Owen, don't, don't go down any building sites and muggle off, mate. He was, <laughs> he was um, yeah, Stars made best friends with Hughesy out there as well. Nah, it wouldn't be. <laughs> Dylan Phillips, mate. Oh, uh, yeah. Phillips. Um, it was a just, you know, typical load of lads in Magaluf. Like, what can you say? Um, just don't class. too many stories to be told on Zoom. I remember, I remember, I remember the last night we had an early flight the next morning. And we were, I was walking back with Pelly, I think, and Downsy was ahead of us. And it was like three nights just drinking solidly and obviously walking up and down the strip or whatever. And I was looking at Downsy's body shape and it went straight down and got to his ankles and they were <laughs> huge. His ankles were ballooned up. <laughs> oh, get us home, mate. Get us home. He, he needed an ice bath. He went on. home and had ice baths. Yeah, he had ice baths when he got in from the night out. <laughs> class. Honestly, oh, yeah, yeah, it, was a, it was a full-on weekend, and it? Yeah, it's class. Yeah. And you had you had a you had a squad Zoom, didn't you, recently? To was that to commemorate the anniversary of winning the title? What, yeah, was it was. Good? Yeah. Good laugh? yeah, it was good. Yeah, until uh, Morgs come on and in, in the gaffer started where they left off <laughs> 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 no it was uh, that was great it was uh, just to see everyone's you know um, yeah it's good I'm glad everyone's doing doing well and everyone's safe so yeah well that's brilliant guys absolutely brilliant to have a little yeah. little reminisce yeah. about that season yeah uh, class really Thank good you very cheers much. John thanks cheers, John yeah. cheers, thanks guys. for your time thanks. guys really yeah. appreciate no it worries. nice to see, see you chaps. all See you, boys. See you, boys. See you, chaps. See you later. Take care. See you, boys. Bye. Take care, boys.